Hi, everybody. Who wants to study some pharmacology for your dental hygiene board exam? So pharmacology is always a topic that nobody wants to study, but you know you have to, and you're going to end up studying it more than the other topics. So in my course, the Board Exam Prep Academy, we go through topics every week. And next week, we're going through pharmacology. So what I've done is I've taken the basics of pharmacology for you, and I'm going to study it with you right now to kind of give you guys an idea of how things work, whether you're curious how things work inside the Board Exam Prep Academy, me, or if you just want to learn the basics of pharmacology, that's all you want. So let me share my screen and let's kind of go through it together. And I'm going to try to study with you guys and help you guys. So it's a little more exciting studying pharmacology because you don't just want to read through your textbook. That's boring. You're going to fall asleep in six hours. You're going to think you learned nothing. So what I always tell my students is start with the basics, honestly, because if you don't have the basics down, you're not going to get the harder parts of pharmacology and the basics are basic. They're easier to learn, easier to memorize. It kind of gives yourself that confidence that you need to go through the harder things, such as when you're learning the drugs. We all I'll know how hard that can be and it's all memorization. So I do, I start with the terms for pharmacology. You need to know the terms when it comes to the board exam because you're going to ask, they are going to ask you silly questions like um, what the body does in response to drugs. What is that? And you're going to go, huh? Well, it's pharmacokinetics, like just to give you guys an idea. So they're going to ask you these silly questions on the board exam. Let me just see if I can zoom in for you guys a little bit here. Can I zoom in? No, I really can't. I feel like it's getting worse, isn't it? Um, but that's okay. Um, you can hear me talk anyway. And then they're going to ask you things in case studies. They're going to ask you critical thinking, like the study of harmful effects on a drug. Like what is the point of pharmacology? What is the point of drugs? Why don't we just give drugs to anybody, anytime? What's the point of testing these things? Well, because people can have a toxic reaction to them, where if you give them too much, that's not good. Too little though isn't good either because then it's not doing anything, so what's the point? So we learn about toxic reactions, we learn about um, the different type of um, doses you would give depending on weight, all of those things. So terms we go through. Um, and feel free, by the way, if you wanna screenshot this, you can kind of learn the terms on your own. Um, if you're a student in my course, you get these full PowerPoints to study anytime on your phone, on your iPad, on your tablet, laptop, whatever. So you always have a chance to study. And then going through drugs, you guys, of course you need to know the chemical name. You need to know the difference between the trade name, the brand name, and the generic name. You absolutely need to know those things because they will ask you on the board exam, such as Tylenol, Advil, aspirin. We all know what that is. That's a trade name. But what is their chemical name for that? Because even in a case study, they might talk about the chemical name. They might talk about the trade name. So you absolutely need to know that. I go through all of the drugs for you. The common drugs that have been asked on the board exam before, we, we go through that together because I don't want you to study 80 pages of drugs. Um, you know, there's no point because you are going to spend two weeks studying pharmacology. They might have five questions on the exam. I tell you guys what's been on the exam before and we kind of narrow it down that way. Just what you need to know for the exam, nothing more and nothing less. Guess what? Agencies, you do have to know the difference. The FDA and the DEA, these people are what basically handles is a drug safe or not? And then do you put drugs, is morphine super harmful or is it no big deal? Who cares? You can, you, you can give it to somebody when their head hurts. You know, they, they want you to schedule drugs as well, but who makes those schedules? So we talk about the different agencies. Ah, definitions. So I'm going to go through these a little bit with you guys, okay? Just to give you an idea. So the effective dose, this is the dose that produces 50% of the maximum response or the dose of the drug that produces a specific response in 50% of its subjects. So you might be reading that and you might be going, oh my God, I'm exhausted already. This is super confusing. I'm just gonna move on. But no, really think about it. So the effective dose, I'm gonna read the first part again. It produces 50% of the maximum response or the dose of the uh, drug that produces a specific response in 50% of the subject. So basically it works 50% of the time and the maximum response you expect to get, it's only gonna be half of that. So these are the calculations you need to figure out and I help you with that. 
the lethal dose. So there's another type of dose. This is what kills half of its subjects. So I don't know about you, but if a drug is being test tested and half of its subjects are killed, I'm not going to want to take that drug, you know? So these are the types of things I need to look at. The therapeutic index. This is to measure the safety of the drug. Onset is very important. They always ask about the onset on the board exam. This is the time required for a drug's effect to begin. The onset is short if the drug is given intravenously, longer if it's orally. So in a nutshell, what the heck does this mean, Andrea? That's what you might be wondering. So the onset is the time it takes for the drug to work. So if your head hurts and you take Advil, well, how long typically is that drug going to work? Is it going to take a half an hour? Is it going to work that second? Any drug that is given intravenously is going to work a lot quicker than if a drug is given orally. Kind of when we talk about in pharmacology, medical emergencies, if you suspect a client is having a heart attack, if they're suffering from angina pains, you would give them nitroglycerin under the tongue. Why do you not just ask them to swallow the pill? Why this? Why that? Well, under the tongue is also very quick. We are not equipped to give nitroglycerin intravenously. So that's why we don't do that. If we could, we would, but we're not doctors, so we can't do this. So that's why it's given under the tongue. It's a quicker way for that drug to start working in the system. And then the length of time a drug's effect lasts. So given Advil, you know, you would take a drug every four to six hours or every 12 hours, depending on what type of drug it is. So that's important to know. Then we talk about half-life, potency, um, efficacy, tolerance, and the therapeutic effects. So I go through all of these inside the pharmacology course. Definitely have a look, you guys, if you feel like you need more explanations to it. But notice how I'm keeping things basic. I'm keeping things simple. I'm not giving you guys paragraphs of what does potency mean. You do not need to know that. You just have to know the specific definitions to pass the board exam. Um, routes of administration. You need to know the different ways that drugs can be administered. And like I said, you guys feel free to take a screenshot of this if you want. Um, again, there's different ways for a drugs to be administered. You need to know that the dose is going to be dependent on the client's age, weight, condition, all of those fun things. We don't just give people pills for the heck of it. It depends on a lot of things. Adverse reactions. So this is probably the biggest part of pharmacology is there's going to be adverse reactions. So you don't want to give a dose that's too high, too low, isn't really doing anything. There's one thing between an allergic reaction to having the client have a toxic or a lethal reaction. Not good. Um, again, continued again, I would say, uh, the teratogenic effect, they often talk about this. This is where, um, you don't want an adverse effect on the fetus. So when we talk about pregnancy, different drugs are in different categories. For example, um, if somebody's pregnant, they wouldn't take Advil, but if they really needed something, they would take Tylenol because it's not as strong or as toxic of an effect as Advil could be potentially. So again, there's different categories. The pharmacokinetics, which we talked about earlier, the four processes you have to know. So the absorption, the distribution, the metabolism, and the excretion. These things are must know for the exam as well. So we talk about so much more inside the course, you guys, but I wanted to give you guys kind of a rundown of the basics of pharmacology. If you're not sure what to study, how to study, study pharmacology, the basics first and go from there. If you need mock exams, I have mock exams as well. Do not read the textbook. That's just going to exhaust you. You're not going to be happy. I suggest reading notes or even just, just reading your notes from school um, if you're not a member of my course and kind of keeping it simple that way. So let me know, you guys, if any questions. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.